totally realizing this shirt is giving vacation dad right now. Um, so that's good. As summer is coming to a close, um, I'm also realizing I don't think I've actually made a illustrator focused video before. I've done a lot more Photoshop and After Effects and stuff um, with like a cameo of illustrator. Um, so we're going to focus on illustrator tips for this one. But these are ones that are tried and true that I use pretty regularly um, and especially recently. But overall, all of these should help. So let's get into it. If you want to make quick stars, you can hit L to make an ellipse uh, or a circle. It can be an oval as well. And if you go to Effect, Distort, Transform, Pucker, and Bloat, you can adjust these however you want. You can also make them these like bubbly X's too. You can make them as exaggerated as you want. But if you want one to be more elongated, you can make it more of an oval shape. Let's say you want to make some custom guides. Um, obviously, if you have the ruler tool open up here, you can do that by hitting Command or Control R. You can obviously click and drag uh, from either side and you can get guides that way. But if you want to have custom guides um, like these shapes here, for example, um, if you select all of this, you can right click and make guides. And obviously, if you want to move those around, um, you can unlock guides move around whatever you need to move around, but super handy. To paste in place, you'll want to have your shape, copy that, control C, and then to paste in place, control shift V. And then you won't see any changes here because it's exactly in the same spot. To send a shape um, behind all your other shapes to the very back, um, have your selected shape that you want to send, and then control shift open bracket to send it back or control shift close bracket to send to the front. To use outline mode, uh, just do control Y. Um, the reason why you'd wanna use uh, control Y every now and then is to be able to make sure that like your file is as clean as you want um, and you're able to get rid of any like outstanding points or vectors or anything like that um, in your final product. This one's a pretty good uh, foundational one, but M for uh, rectangles um, or squares if you hold shift and then L for um, ellipses or circles if you hold shift. And then probably one of my more recent favorite ones is E, which is the free transform tool. Uh, this only works on like outlines, so you can't really use it on like live type, um, only when the type is converted to outlines. Uh, but if I hit E, you'll get this little sidebar here. Um, and then you're able to kind of manipulate the, the points here to get like a little bit of perspective um, or if you want to do the individual points. This helps a lot with uh, if you're doing like custom type and stuff. So if you converted your type to outlines and then hit E and you're trying to get some like custom kind of perspective here, this is a really good tool for that. Making your own custom brushes, I think is one of the most fun parts about Illustrator. Um, these are just a couple brushes I made for my own personal branding. And these were kind of the base shapes that I used to make those. Uh, so if I wanted to take this chain link shape right here, whatever vector that you want, then you go to brushes and then down at the bottom, the plus sign, new brush, and you'll want to make this a pattern brush. Then from there, you can kind of see a preview of it and then you can kind of customize how you want the corners to act. If you want to have any spacing between any of these things and then a bunch of other settings here. Once you name it and you click OK, you have a new brush that if you use like the pen tool, for example, and click on that, you've got a new brush and you can adjust the size and all that good stuff. If you want to make a sticker or just have the appearance of a sticker, um, I know a lot of people will tend to just go to the stroke tool over here and just bump that up like really, really far. Um, but then you get problems with, you know, different kinds of corner joins and everything. Um, and this can work for like what you need, but then there's more steps to uh, converting those into outlines and everything. So what we're going to do instead is have our object selected and go to object path offset path and then you can adjust from there how thick or thin you want that outer border to be and then you can also adjust the kind of joins that you want. It'll automatically join um, and like group together your original artwork and the uh, the beveled stuff. Then I'll usually try to group the original artwork together um, just so it's separated from the back. And then what I'll usually do too is go to Pathfinder and join the entire back together. Set that 
original art to whatever color you want and there you go you have a perfect outline sticker so let's say that i made a bunch of icons or something here too or a bunch of logo versions um, and i want to be able to export these um, using their strict like bounding box here uh, you could select all of these and add them to the asset exporter over, which is over here. Um, so you could do that um, and set it to whatever setting you want. But if you want these to have individual artboards um, and export it that way, if you hit Shift and O, um, that'll give you your artboard tool. And really it's as simple as just clicking on your logos or your icons and it'll automatically set the bounding box rather than trying to click over um, and try to get it very perfectly to the uh, to the bounding box there. Let's say that you're trying to find the center of your artboard here so you can add like guides and stuff like that. Um, and sometimes it's easy to find, but most of the time it's not. Um, so if you hit Shift O to do the artboard tool again and go to your artboard options in this little menu, you can hit show center mark, you can show crosshairs um, and for you video and motion people, you can show video safe areas as well um, and it'll show you you can see um, i'm sure you can edit the colors too but you get a little crosshair in the center and then you can see very visibly the center marks for for your entire artboard so scaling strokes and effects is super important especially if you're working with like icons and logos and you're doing a lot of like pen tool and line work um, so I have like two different examples here. Um, this one, they're both at like seven point stroke. Um, but if I were to scale this down, you can see that like this definitely appears thicker than, than when it started. Um, there's not a lot of space around like the circles inside and everything. Um, but if you go to preferences up here, then under scale strokes and effects, you wanna check that. And then now when you scale it down, it should keep the uh, the right amount of space and it should be like proportional um, to your original artwork. I'm sure a lot of us know too in Illustrator that if you have an object selected and you hit the I for eyedropper tool and you can click on any other vector and it will give you that exact color and property. But if I only wanted to have this be a stroke and keep the circles as a stroke, but I wanted it to be this black color, I can hit I, but then holding down shift and making sure that over here, the fill and stroke, like you're on the right uh, property here. If I hold down shift and click on a color, it'll just affect that property, but it'll give you that color. Similar with this, if this was a stroke instead, and I just wanted this yellow stroke color to be the fill of this, I'll make sure I'm on the fill property over here, make sure that's up front, hit I, and then shift and then click on the stroke there and then you'll get that fill color. So an effect I've been using uh, pretty recently for some freelance work is the like 3D um, like bevel effect uh, for like some type and stuff. Um, so I'll just kind of like walk through the best way that I've found to get like a flat vector graphic of that rather than having to deal with all the shading and all that stuff. Um, I'll start with converting these to outlines and then another thing that I'll do sometimes is offset path just to give it um, a bit of an outline without using the stroke tool. I'm actually going to select each of the offset path pieces here, use the path binder and unite those just so it's one shape. Send that to back and then I'll make this inner part word design white so we have some some difference there and then if i go to effect 3d and materials i've used the classic one quite a bit um, i think it's just more helpful for this effect less options to go through and then what i want to do is to be able to have a true 3d um, kind of bevel to this um, without having to do a bunch of like pen tooling and and having every angle be exact. Um, this is just a quicker way to do it and it's more exact that way. So if I wanted to have something like this, and then if I go to more options, blend shapes, I will make one, just so there's less steps of like shading and stuff and not trying to make it look realistic. And then I'll hit okay. And then if I go to object, expand appearance, you can see, and especially if you go to outline mode, you can see, you know, kind of all the inner workings of like what makes the word design here 3D. Um, but I want to make 
all the black pieces unified. I want to cut out the white within this, but there's just a lot of uh, vertices, a lot of um, vector stuff going on here. And so what I've done is go in and through, there's a bunch of different groups here, but I'll select all the white pieces and group those together. And then I'll select everything and then deselect that white bit. Um, so we will just have like all the black stuff, but you can tell in the fill and stroke panel, there's different shades of black. Like even though it looks like it's all the same shade, there's different shades here. Um, and I want to make that one. So I can just use the eyedropper tool, click somewhere and make sure that it's all the same. And then I'll go to Pathfinder and Unite. Now, obviously we don't know where our, our main word design here is. I'm going to do Control Shift close bracket and bring that to the front. So now we have our black pieces and then we have our white piece here. Then a step further, can select all of that, go to Pathfinder again and hit trim. And trim um, will basically exclude everything that's up front here, but I wanna make sure that these um, small um, counters that are meant to be in these letters here are grouped with the black piece here. So if you move that, then I have my 3D beveled um, piece here. Give a thumbs up uh, on this video if you are also a vacation dad or love my shirt. Thank you very much. Well, I hope you guys enjoy this video. Um, I have lots of other videos similar to this. Also feel free to check out my online store. I have a lot of free and paid um, assets and templates and stuff like that that hopefully make your quality of life and just process a lot easier. Um, subscribe, like all the YouTube things, and I will see you in the next video.